Ladies and gentlemen, one of the most distressing fears that every parent experiences is the potential risks their child may face while studying in a foreign country. Nonetheless, if the child has the privilege of living with relatives abroad, it would certainly alleviate the parent's concerns to some extent. However, there are situations where this sense of security may not be guaranteed. This is the story of Michelle Leng, a 25-year-old Chinese student studying at the University of Technology, Sydney. On Friday, April 21, 2016, Upon returning from the university, she decided to go out on a shopping trip in the city center of Sydney, Australia. Afterward, she boarded a train to head back home. Strangely, upon reaching her destination, she vanished without a trace, leaving behind a disturbing story of terror, a family's desperate efforts to seek the truth, and a devastating act of betrayal. Michelle Leng was a girl full of potential and aspirations. Michelle had always dreamt of pursuing her studies in Australia, and one fateful day, her dream became a reality. Unfortunately, in 2016, a tragic tale unfolded in her life, and her story took a tragic turn, devoid of the ending she had hoped for. As the investigation progressed further, shocking revelations started surfacing, shedding light on the dark secrets hidden within the family. Was Michelle a victim of greed, or something more sinister? Join us as we explore the chilling complexities of the murder investigation of the innocent young woman, Michelle Ling. The tragic case has not only caused immeasurable grief for the mourning family, but also had a profound effect on the community. Let's pay tribute to her memory by imagining a world without such senseless violence. Background. Meng Mei Leng, also known as Michelle Leng, was born on January 29, 1991, in Chengdu, Sichuan Province, China. Michelle was raised as a kind, sensible, and respectful girl who shared a close bond with her parents. The tragic loss of her father in an earthquake in 2008 deeply affected Michelle. Despite the hardships, she excelled academically and aspired to move to Australia. With the unwavering support of her mother, Mei Zhang Leng, Michelle pursued her dream of receiving an education in Australia. In 2011, Michelle enrolled at the University of Technology in Sydney to study business, marking the beginning of her journey towards a brighter future. Michelle's aunt, her mother's sister, who already resided in Australia, generously offered her a place to stay in her apartment. In 2012, Michelle's aunt, aged 44, married Derek Barrett, a 20-year-old unemployed IT professional. Michelle was only three years older than Derek when they started living together in suburban Campsie, New South Wales. Michelle, her aunt, her cousin, and Derek shared the residence. The early years went smoothly for Michelle. While residing in Australia, she embraced her adventurous side by sharing images of herself in various locations, such as the West Head Lookout near Sydney Harbour, Resolute Beach in Chase National Park, and Worry Beach on the South Coast. Additionally, she frequently socialized with her friends, capturing moments of them enjoying cocktails and spending time together, much like any typical college student. She also excelled in her studies and managed a part-time job. However, in 2016, Michelle's aunt started spending long periods in Wollongong due to professional commitments. As a result, Michelle, her cousin, and Derek carried on living together in the Campsie apartment. During her academic journey, Michelle successfully completed her first degree at the university before pursuing a second degree in the field of business. Unfortunately, it was while she was studying for her second degree that tragedy unexpectedly occurred. After finishing her studies at the University of Technology, Sydney, on Friday, April 21, 2016, Michelle bid farewell to her friends and caught a bus outside the campus. The bus was going to the city center where she planned to spend the afternoon shopping. She expressed her interest in exploring the downtown shops and potentially buying new clothes or school supplies before going home to her friends. CCTV footage captured Michelle walking through the busy Pitt Street Mall, a well-known shopping center in the heart of Sydney. These images show some of her last moments. Based on the surveillance footage, 
Michelle also had lunch with a friend at the fish markets in Sydney that day. However, it is unclear whether this lunch happened before or after her shopping trip. Michelle then got on a train heading to Campsie, where she lived with her aunt, uncle, and cousins. At 4.32 p.m., Michelle used her Opal card to exit the Campsie railway station, captured by the station's CCTV system for the last time. Shortly after, at 4.42 p.m., the final CCTV images of Michelle Leng were recorded by the cameras on her aunt's apartment building. Later that evening, Michelle made a phone call to her friends, showing no signs of worry, and sent them a final text message at midnight. From that moment on, Michelle Leng seemingly disappeared without a trace. Disappearance and Murder Despite living with her aunt, uncle, and cousin, it took three days after Michelle was last seen on CCTV for anyone to realize she was missing. Michelle's aunt had been away on a business trip from April 21st to April 24th, 2016. Her cousin spent a lot of time at friends' houses during this period, away from their apartment building home. The family didn't have meals together or spend much time with each other while Michelle's aunt was away, contributing to the lack of awareness about Michelle's whereabouts. Michelle's uncle spent the most time at the apartment over those three days, but he worked late and slept through the days, assuming Michelle was on campus or with friends. On April 24, 2016, Michelle's uncle picked up her aunt from Hurstville Railway Station around 10 p.m. When Michelle's aunt arrived home, she asked about Michelle's whereabouts, as she had been trying to reach her with no response. Derek, Michelle's uncle, didn't know where she was, causing panic for the couple. Along with Michelle's cousin, they searched Michelle's bedroom and checked her social media accounts, private messages, and computer for clues. Derek tried calling Michelle multiple times with no answer. It wasn't until the evening of April 25, 2016, four days after Michelle was last seen on CCTV, that Derek and Michelle's aunt went to Campsie Police Station to report her missing. Derek informed the police officers that he had not encountered Michelle face to face since approximately midnight on April 21st. However, he had indeed conversed with her over the phone at around 10 a.m. on the morning of April 22nd. After filing the missing persons report, Derek and Michelle's aunt notified the Chinese embassy about Michelle's disappearance. Regrettably, the search for Michelle would not last long for her family. In reality, Michelle had already been located the day before her family reported her missing on April 24, 2016. At approximately 10.30 a.m. on the 24th, along the clifftop, a tourist strolled at Snapper Point to witness the refreshing breeze and ocean air. The tourist took a moment to stop at the cliff's edge, appreciating the beauty of nature with its stunning landscapes and ocean view. While looking out at the sea, the tourist spotted something that it found suspicious it was initially hard to recognize, but after focusing for a bit, the tourist realized it was a woman's body floating face down in the water, roughly 80 miles from the campsite. They quickly alerted the authorities, and after a few hours, the police rescue team was able to recover the woman's remains from the ocean. The police issued a statement saying they had discovered an unidentified woman of Asian descent, aged between 20 to 35, and approximately 170 centimeters tall. Chief Inspector Gary Jublin of the New South Wales Homicide Unit mentioned that they were working creatively to gather information about the incident. They were reviewing CCTV footage and other evidence to understand what happened in the area. He did not disclose any specific details, but assured that they were making progress in their investigation. After receiving a report about Michelle's disappearance, law enforcement compared the information with an unidentified female body found at Snapper Point. Her relatives living in Australia and overseas had also been notified about the sad news of Michelle being brutally murdered afterward. Michelle's body, upon recovery, showed multiple injuries indicating a severe assault. The autopsy report revealed more than 30 stab wounds, showing the intensity of the attack. There were also defensive wounds on her arms, suggesting that Michelle fought against her attacker. After her daughter's untimely death, Michelle's mother traveled to Australia Unable to come to terms with the reality of her loss, she wanted to visit the place her daughter had always dreamed of. The detective decided to interrogate Michelle's aunt and her husband, who lived in the same apartment as her. Derek mentioned that he saw Michelle last during dinner on Thursday, April 21st. After dinner, they watched a movie together before Michelle went to bed. When Derek woke up on Friday, April 22nd, Michelle was not at home. 
Assuming she had already left due to waking up late, Derek sent her a text message that went unread. Michelle's aunt, who was away on a business trip, couldn't provide any information. They informed the investigators that upon her mysterious disappearance, Derek and her aunt decided to use her computer and discovered evidence on Michelle's computer, suggesting her involvement with an Australian man. This led the police to suspect she may have gone on a date with someone she met online, but this theory was quickly dismissed. While leaving Michelle's place, detectives noticed Derek's car covered in dirt, but found nothing suspicious at that time. The investigators started focusing on Derek Barrett, the last person to see Michelle alive. Barrett's inconsistent story and lack of interaction with Michelle raised suspicions. He was interrogated, but when he refused to answer questions and asked for legal representation, he was arrested on suspicion of being involved in the crime. Despite his denial of being in the area, cell phone data indicated his presence at the exact location where Michelle's body was discovered on April 24th. Additionally, security cameras recorded a vehicle resembling his own near Snapper Point. In addition to this evidence, it is worth recalling that when the police noticed dirt on Derek's car as they left his place, it was later revealed that the road leading to the location where Michelle's body was found was also covered in dirt. The dirt on Derek's car likely originated from driving down that road, further strengthening his connection to the crime scene. Surveillance footage captured near Snapper Point showed Barrett purchasing drinks and a few items at a gas station on his way there, contradicting his claim that his car was not in the vicinity. When confronted about his dishonesty, he attributed his memory problems to drug use. Consequently, his phone was seized for further investigation. After analyzing Derek's confiscated phone, Investigators discovered that he had been secretly recording private moments of his stepdaughter and Michelle, betraying their trust and invading their privacy. Two video recordings were found as evidence, one lasting 15 minutes and the other 30 minutes, both of which depicted Derek's troubling mindset. In another video, Derek is captured acting inappropriately next to an unconscious and sleeping Michelle. There were also pictures on the phone from just before Michelle's untimely demise, Investigators believed that around midnight, Michelle was subjected to a severe attack by Derek Barrett, who used tape to confine and silence her. His phone had disturbing pictures of Michelle strapped to a bed, naked, and wearing a terrified expression on her face. Of the 17 photos, none revealed the injuries that ultimately caused her demise. Derek took this last picture on April 22nd at 8 a.m., when Michelle was still alive. When questioned by investigators, Derek's stepdaughter stated that she had been home for about three hours before leaving again and that she had not heard Michelle call for help. The exact time of Michelle's death has not been determined by the experts, making it uncertain whether she was still alive when her cousin returned. It is confirmed, however, that Michelle's body remained in the apartment during her three-hour stay. The shower was found to be running. Derek was captured on surveillance footage leaving his apartment four times. Derek utilized the building's elevator to access the basement area where the building's waste is discarded. He made a total of four trips to the basement on the 23rd of April, once at 4.46 a.m., once at 5.17 a.m., and twice within a short span of time around 2.30 p.m. It was speculated that Derek's frequent visits to the basement were his efforts to tidy up the apartment and get rid of any incriminating evidence. When Michelle's aunt and Derek's wife returned from a work trip, she observed the unusual cleanliness of the house. Michelle's aunt noticed that the cleaning fluid bottle, which used to be full and large, had noticeably decreased. She also observed that Michelle's bed sheets had been washed recently, even though it was usually Michelle's job to do so, but had no suspicions. Additionally, she noticed that a collection of bath towels, a roll of black duct tape, and a large suitcase were missing from the area. Derek texted his wife early in the morning to ask her to confirm her time of arrival at the station later that day. He left in his car at 3.34 a.m. after using the elevator to get to the parking lot at 3.19 a.m. Regretfully, Michelle had already been killed, and by then, Derek's car had her body in the trunk. Derek planned to dispose of Michelle's body, so he drove to Snapper Point. He stopped at a petrol station at 3.37 a.m. to buy food and beverages, acting as if nothing had happened. Notably, at 7.27 a.m., a car that looked a lot like Derek's was seen on camera passing through a neighboring conservation area near Snapper Point. Derek proceeded to Snapper Point with great care and placed Michelle's naked body near the cliff, 
hiding it with a strong layer of black plastic. Ignoring the safety barriers, he forcefully dropped her motionless body over the cliff, watching closely as it fell 20 to 30 meters into the vast ocean below. At precisely 9.19 a.m., Derek used his smartphone to take seven photographs, capturing the cliff's surroundings and the expansive seascape. After that, the police were alerted by eyewitnesses who spotted a body in the water. Trial and conviction. Barrett faced 27 separate charges, including unlawful imprisonment, videotaping, and the murder of Michelle Lang. It is worth noting that he was not charged with solicitation for lustful purposes. Derek attributed his criminal behavior to a difficult upbringing and school bullying. Some argue that a troubled childhood can be used to justify abusive behavior. The court proceedings began in October 2017, and after evaluation, the psychiatrist concluded that he was fully responsible for his actions. Barrett expressed deep regret in a formal apology letter to his spouse and Michelle's family, acknowledging the pain he caused. Despite his remorse, he was sentenced to 46 years in prison in December 2017. In December 2017, Derek Barrett pled guilty and received a 46-year sentence. He may be eligible for parole after serving 34 years. Barrett responded minimally throughout his sentencing, keeping his head lowered. His parole eligibility was originally scheduled for 2050, however, due to unforeseen circumstances, this was changed. In a media statement released outside the courthouse, Detective Gary Jublin praised the lengthy sentence. Whereas, Michelle's family fought hard for Barrett to be sentenced to life in prison, and they were disappointed with the lower punishment he received. However, their ordeal did not conclude there. Four years following the crime, Michelle's family faced additional distress due to an unforeseen event. A senior woman with dementia was found to possess a USB drive. Surprisingly, she resided approximately six miles away from Barrett's location before his arrest, even though she had no ties to him due to her deteriorating memory. The origin of the USB drive remains a mystery, but her daughter became intrigued by its contents and opted to examine it on her computer. After discovering explicit videos and photos on the USB stick, she immediately contacted the authorities. The recordings, made on April 22nd and 23rd, 2016, depicted the abduction of Michelle and subsequent events. Among the files, evidence of Derek's 2016 kidnapping charge, for which he was convicted in 2017, was found. However, there were also other files showing additional offenses for which he had not been charged. Shockingly, the recordings, lasting over 60 minutes, revealed Derek repeatedly sexually assaulting and raping Michelle on April 22, 2016. On December 18, 2019, Derek was confronted with further accusations, which consisted of nine charges, two charges of sexual assault, six charges of aggravated sexual assault, and one charge of attempted aggravated sexual assault. After being formally charged on October 1, 2020, Derek admitted guilt for all the charges and subsequently received an additional prison sentence of 20 years. Unfortunately, both of his sentences will be served simultaneously. However, his opportunity for parole has been delayed by an additional two years compared to the original schedule. He will not be able to be released before October 27, 2052. Although justice was served in this case, for those left behind, the scars of this tragedy will never fully heal. The memory of Michelle Lang, a bright light extinguished too soon, will forever serve as a reminder of the unfathomable darkness that can reside within those closest to us and is a stark reminder of the potential for violence within families and relationships. This case has also brought attention to the serious issue of domestic violence, the crucial need to support those who are victims of abuse, and the significance of taking a stand against domestic abuse. Michelle's legacy continues to inspire hope and resilience, encouraging others to speak out against injustice and advocate for a kinder, safer world. Thank you for watching this video. Please provide your valuable feedback in the comment section below. Subscribe to our channel dedicated to uncovering the truth behind long forgotten mysteries. Keep an eye out for frequent updates and immerse yourself in the realm of real life cases where each story serves as a haunting glimpse into crimes of the past. Until we meet again, stay vigilant of your surroundings.